Namaste. Welcome to Youth TV Show. In today's episode, we are featuring Youth Leadership Training produced by Leadership Academy. We have with us Mr. Santosh Shah, the President of Leadership Academy, to talk about leadership. What is the first strong quality that you require to be a leader? Identity. That's the right answer. That's the core of leadership. Is that you need to have an identity as a leader. Right? You need to have an identity as a leader. You may have all these characters of leadership. But if people don't identify you in leading a particular sector, then you may not be called a leader. For example, in my own line of work, there are a lot of political analysts who knows everything about politics and goes on TV, talks for half an hour, one hour. But they are not called a political leader because their identity is not with day-to-day -day political leadership. They don't contest the elections like me. You know, I talk about politics on TV for half an hour, one hour, but nobody says I'm a political leader because I don't get identified as a political leader. There are political leaders who become member of parliament, even minister, and you have never heard of this person before. And they do a great work as well as a, as a minister because they are identified by the political party as their political leader, they are identified as a political leader by the constituency they get elected, they, get, they go and run for the election from. You need to be virtuous, you need to be right, you need to be knowledgeable. But the most important and the core character you need to be a leader is identity. Now identity for different individuals may mean different things. If you are a householder, you identify yourself with the house. If you are a political leader, you identify yourself with a particular political party. Or if you have held a position with the government in the past, you hold on to that. Identity is very important. Now, Whenever you go, I know some of you go for internships abroad, you have to identify yourself. Basically, how do you identify yourself in a public gathering like this? Is you introduce yourself. You introduce yourself and that's your identity. Second thing is you introduce yourself if you're, if you're applying somewhere, you send a CV. So if somebody hasn't met you or interviewed you, they see your CV. And if they don't want to go in, but you say send your CV if you're applying for a job or for academics. But if you are just trying to introduce yourself, you send something called profile. So it's not too long, it's one paragraph, it tells, it tells slightly about yourself. So I think each one of you need to write your profile. You might write your name, student, which semester you are in, get college, Kathmandu. You will be placing your phone number, email address at the end if somebody needs to reach you. Now this is for what? It's for email purpose. You, have, you don't want to send your CV. You don't want to let people your date of birth, etc. You send them a profile. As a student, can you have a profile? Yes, you can have your profile. And that does that mean you are a leader? No, maybe not, but it's, it gives you an identity. So self-introduction, that's called self-introduction. Now you can introduce yourself in three different levels. One is less than five seconds. Another introduction would be approximately 30 seconds to one minute. It tells you like it tells slightly more about you, and then I would say a third level, which is the long introduction, would be from one minute to five minutes. In three seconds, I can tell you what is my name, what is my post, and what is my organization name. I don't need to tell you I'm from Nepal because you already know that. I don't have to say I'm at Get College because we all are here. A lot of information I don't need to tell in three to five seconds. But let's say if I had one minute, I would probably read out my profile, entire thing, because it's already written, I exactly know what to say, I don't fumble, I don't get hold up. Then if I have five minutes of introduction, if, if it's in Nepal and if, the, if I'm put five political parties at conflict, 
let's say in hospitality industry if you are in conflict with the trade unions there will be somebody from the government maybe maybe you need to get to know each other better you will spend a longer time introducing yourself so talking about the issue also so that's the five minute introduction profile is very easy what you do is you go online and look for short profiles of student if you are heading a club or a group even within college or your community you could add that as well in today's world staying in the back and having no identity staying in the front and having no identity you know being talented and not putting that out is not going to help it's a big it's becoming competitive every day to be a leader you need a lot of different characters without which you know you can become a leader to stay as a leader you need a lot of characters and the first thing is identity you know a politician says great line and we say forget him he's a corrupt leader he will say anything whatever what he is saying is not wrong right whatever he is saying probably may be right but because we identify that leader with corruption we don't like that person a great example called you know einstein a physicist right so when einstein comes do you think of him as a physicist or as a violinist you see him as a physicist maybe he liked music more than physics maybe to himself he said that i am better musician than a physicist maybe i don't know i mean i don't know him personally and i can't know him personally he's not alive but most people the whole world identifies him as a physicist we develop a certain identity of a person we don't want to know something else about the person so identity is also very heavy willingness what is willingness you want to you want to be a leader if you are not willing somebody forcing you to be a leader does not work it's not just in nepal in south asia it's all over the world where somebody who is not willing to be a leader are pressurized to lead and they can't lead very well if you are willing is that going to make you a leader right away no sir it is a hard work yeah exactly so you need to ready yourself now how do you ready yourself now let's say if you want to be a team leader of a mountain climbing team to the everest and you're willing to do that is that going to take you to the top of the everest what do you have to do before you go even to to namche bazar you have to get ready for that how do you get ready for that you need to practice you need to learn from the best right you need to and to lead the group you need to understand your team member before you even go to nachi bazar and attempt the everest climb you need to see whether that team is willing to accept you as your team leader or not it's better to have conflict in a training school than to have a conflict in the base camp for readiness whatever characters we discussed about patience knowledge that all comes under readiness do when you are trying to ready yourself you try to imbibe those characters now the third and most important thing that that comes is enthusiasm now what is enthusiasm what is enthusiasm let's say you take a leadership in a hotel industry you are willing to you made yourself ready you gave gave that industry 20 years now you are the ceo of a hotel you get a nice air conditioned room comfortable chair you have a big meeting room inside your office so you think you have achieved everything you don't need you don't need to step out of your room at all everybody comes to you reports to you take orders from you right you have a comfortable life is that going to make you a good leader why not you know you are handling it very well everything is coming to your office you're like a great processor in the office is that going to make you a good leader why not you need to be around cuz you need to be around you need to be enthusiastic about your work now you started from cleaning the dishes 
watching the gate, being in the CCTV camera, where will all these 20 years of experience come into use? It's when you become a leader. Because even if you are on a desk, you exactly know what's going on in different areas and you want to move around, you have to be enthusiastic about your work. Most of the time, when people get to the position of leadership, what do they lose? Enthusiasm. You know, they work very hard, they fight the election, become the prime minister or minister, and then they become very comfortable in their comfort zone. Comfort zone is a killer for a leader. Because when you want to be a leader, it's a very uncomfortable position. You know, I don't know why people fight for that seat, but the chair of a leader is not a comfortable chair. And if it's comfortable, then you should doubt your leadership. Why do most people don't want to be a leader? Because of two major reasons. It's risky. If you're a nice chef making great food in the kitchen, 28 days out of 30 days, maybe you get praises. But if you're a leader, and even if you're working very hard, 28 days you are listening to problems and criticism. So a lot of people don't like to be a leader because it's risky. You have to hear a lot of negative stuff. Sometimes things are written against you in the newspaper. They may be true, they may not be true. Why is it written against you in the newspaper and not your colleagues or the classmates you had in your school? It's a bad thing, but it also says you have reached a position where publicly you could be criticized. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of people, when they become a leader, they say, I'm attacked, people don't like me, I'm criticized, but that comes with the package. People don't want to be a leader because they don't like to take the risk and they don't want to answer questions. If you check into a hotel and things are in a mess, do you call the maintenance or you call the general manager? You call the manager. It did the, it's, is it the general manager's personal work to fix that? No, maybe there's, there's technician for that. Right? But you as the leader of the industry, you're answerable to that. Now, what does success mean to people? Is success a major component of leadership? If you become a leader, do you want to be a successful leader or just a leader? Most of the time, leadership position comes with a position of status of success. So as a leader, you have to give tests every time and you're expected to succeed every time. For society or for your, let's say your colleagues, your friends, what would success mean? Money. money. If you're making a lot of money, you're considered successful. So money is fortunately or unfortunately one of the biggest detrimental factor for the society to look at your success. What is the second thing? Power. If you're very powerful, people think you're very successful. Number three, Status. Right? If you go to, in, even, even let's say I have four friends, we all go to different schools. Will we have same status if we are all studying in grade 10 or different status? Why is that? Because the five schools may have different status. Right? You go to a very expensive school, they say, oh, you go to this school. You go to government school and they will be like the lowest status. But that's how the society judges it. Maybe, maybe that's not entirely true. Number four is fame. Is fame and status the same? No. May look same, but actually it's, it's not. You know, status is slightly more long term. Fame, you can get overnight fame and next day nobody remembers you. Success, in my opinion, is wanting to achieve what you want to. Achieve. So even as a leader, because you are answerable to people and you are subject to criticism and negativity, how many success would you want to achieve? Two. One, what is your expectation of your team member or the society for the position you hold in, in the power? Second is what success really means to you. For example, let's say you become, one of you become prime minister. The country wants you to fix the housing issue after the earthquake. And maybe you want to fix the waste management. That's a subject that's close to your heart. So how many goals you have to achieve while you are the Prime Minister? Both. 
One, what public expects you to do. One, what you wish to achieve. Because when, you, when your position changes, people will remember you more for what you contributed. The new idea you brought into the office or into the country while you were taking the leadership position. In colleges, most of you volunteer, like sometimes you volunteer for blood, blood donation, you volunteer to go and clean uh, the streets, you volunteer to go to a village and, and, and do the construction works. So what I was discussing is when you go to volunteer, just the feeling of pity, a feeling of being kind is enough to volunteer. You should know the need. You should know the need of the people. You know, maybe it's a vegetarian village. You can't really take uh, meat there and expect people to eat it. You know, if it's, uh, if it's South Asia, like Nepal, India, you don't want to take beef. If it's Muslim countries, you don't want to take pork. These things become very sensitive. So you need to understand the need, not just, okay, I have this and I'm going to throw it in your country and I'm going to think like it's, uh, I'm a great volunteer, I did a great service. So you also need to know what they actually need. So what do you also require besides addressing the need? You have to be a bit judgmental as well. You, know, you need to see whether that's really a good uh, expectation or not. So you have to say, well, be realistic. Be realistic. What should be your attitude when you go to volunteer in a village? You should have the feeling of service. You should think you are there to serve and not to help. You should be kind and not have pity. Because every individual has something to offer you and you as an individual have something to offer to others. So be open as how you can also be served by your own service. Right? So a lot of the time you go volunteer and you think you're going to fix the problem in one day and it doesn't happen. Be aware that you know you can't solve all the problems. You just be happy with how much you achieved that day. Empowering self to empower others. Now as a leader, how significant is this? Without empowering yourself, if you go and serve, the chances of failing is going to be very high. Right? So, you have to empower yourself. Poverty and illiteracy is not a good identity to have as a, as a nation. So, raising awareness is very significant. Now, what is, how do you raise awareness? Communications. Yes, communications. <laughs> Campaigns. And how do you campaign? How do you how do you raise awareness? How do you campaign? Going to village. So you could start from going from door to door, which does not cost money. It costs a lot of effort to putting mega budget advertising in newspaper and television. So for social issue to be raised, there is no fixed budget. It depends on how much budget you have or how many supporters you have. But the best way to raise awareness is to go to people in a community, in every houses, and raise the awareness. Same goes for political campaigning. Now, when you raise awareness, most of the time, we raise awareness and don't provide a solution. An awareness campaign, in my opinion, without a solution, is the worst service to provide to any, any population. And that happens a lot in our country. Right? You have to also give a solution. What kind of solution? What kind of solution? I go to a village and then tell them that oh, you, this health issue is there. You have to come to Kathmandu and get, go to the most expensive hospital. Is that awareness? Or that's just advertising a particular hospital. You have to give a, 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 a solution that is Reachable. Giving a local solution is always a great example. I believe where there is a problem, the solution must be somewhere there. What do you require to raise an awareness? 
to raise an awareness somebody as we discussed tv commercial to running to the door you need two things one is equipment equipments are very important equipment and tools the second thing that's important that we discussed is the messes how do you give the right messes you are a youth and you have to do something called advocacy now what is word advocacy where does it come from it comes from the word advocate now what is advocate advocate basically means lawyer right so a lawyer needs a case so you advocate a case or you advocate an issue how many issue do you advocate as a leader or as an organization one maybe two but very clear your message has to be very clear so let's say if you were to start a youth forum in a village what should your budget look like should it be sustainable or should it be very expensive and you go to some business houses or a political figure to gain some money to sorry to raise some fund to run your project at least you should have one or two programs which is financially sustainable because as i said you know you identify yourself with a youth club or a youth ngo or a youth group and when you go and discuss about it you say that at least i have one program that is always functional so when you carry your work in your society always bear in mind that you will have one or two programs which is self sustainable so as a as a youth leader should you set right example or wrong example right examples thank you mr santosha for sharing your insights on the topic of leadership to join our youth leadership training you can contact your principal or eca coordinator at your school or college you can follow us at facebook.com leadership academy ktm we will be back with a new episode of youth tv show next week namaste <laughs>